Hello, uh, my name is Said Lutfian, and I'm going to talk about microarchitecture composite metal joints by additive manufacturing for renewable energy applications. Uh, I'm a member of Center for Advanced Material for Renewable Energy Generation, so called Camry. I'm a researcher in metals, materials, and the structure. Uh, it's an EPS source project in collaboration with the University of Edinburgh. Uh, the aim is to use a novel smart multifunctional materials with advanced manufacturing techniques to address the, the, uh, the existing and arising challenges in renewable energy conversion and energy storage. I am also a member of Offshore Engineering Institute in the University of Strasbourg, and my main research focus are remanufacturing, additive manufacturing, smart structure, morphing, and adaptable structure, the similar joining strategy. Uh, conventional process to bond the similar materials, particularly metal and composite parts, resulted in very poor mechanical performance and durability. The emerging additive manufacturing technologies present an attractive prospect to uh, produce a uh, bespoke joint for hybrid structure. The aim in this project is to develop a reliable 3D printed composite metal hybrid joint by additive manufacturing. As you can see here in the, in the schematic, uh, we are going to uh, fabricate the pins uh, the metal pins uh, on, the, on the material substrate of or, or, uh, and all, also uh, uh, we, are, we are going to uh, to fabricate the 3D printed carbon fiber plate uh, with, with this technique. Uh, we have uh, several uh, collaborators, industrial and institu institutional collaborators in this project. Uh, our approach is to parametrically study on the pin density diameter and comparison between the drill versus the 3D printed laminated and uh, also we trying to, to, uh, to address some challenges as reducing the number of defects in the 3D printed metals and the composite part assessing damage on the substrate due to the, uh, due to the welding part and prediction of the mechanical response. The, the aim and then the first step is to feasibility the study of the manufacturing process of 3D printed composites for structural composite using the mark force to the stop 3D printer. And uh, when, when the hose is already uh, designed to, uh, to be there, and the result shows us that the, uh, the additive manufacturing allows to, manuf to, to fabricate the reinforced hole uh, by uh, concentric fibers. Super, uh, sub suppressing the drilling operation during the assembly of the composite component. The specimen were inspected by the SCM micro microscopy, finding a good degree of the fiber alignment with the uh, deposition trajectory. The void tended to appear uh, in the area between the two adjacent uh, fiber filaments. The 3D printed, the 3D printed presented low capacity to fill the gaps produced by the uh, collusion between no uh, tangent uh, filaments uh, resulting in the void of like mm, half a millimeter lens, uh, cutting of the fiber, people also induced uh, toe splitting uh, and uh, uh, filamentization. Also, we use the Abaco simulation to address the most efficient uh, whole pattern and check the best performance of the hybrid joint among the different cases correlated the, uh, the result at the end with the, uh, with the, with the uh, real, I mean, uh, with the test uh, specimens. For the metal parts, we use the open hybrid manufacturing platform, uh, which is uh, the, the hybrid manufacturing technology the good things about this machine is that it has the uh, you can you can you can do the, the LMD uh, process uh, and then doing the inspection and subtract doing the machining when when the sample is inside the machine uh, just with changing the heads uh, and uh, for the for the material of the pins we use the inconel. 718 powder and we check the 
uh, nominal particle size of the between 60 to 19 micrometers and uh, for the to, to find the correlation between the process parameters and uh, and and uh, uh, the, the, the the fabricated uh, component we checked some we did, we did some design of experiment and uh, we deposited some uh, single uh, single bit trials we changing the laser power and also scan velocity and then uh, with the different uh, building, checking the different building strategy, changing the laser power, or the step uh, overlap or a step over scan speed, and also uh, the, the, uh, the building direction itself. You can see here different, uh, the, the result of the different building strategy of the, uh, of the component. And uh, to check the, the, the size, and to have control on the size of uh, on the size uh, and, and melting pool, and also uh, trying to trying to have a feedback control system, we uh, we use the NIT infrared camera installation. In this case, off access, but we are we are already working for on access uh, control also. And uh, as you can see here, the result uh, it shows very good from different uh, palette infrared or tomography how uh, how the process is ongoing and uh, uh, you can see here some of some of the results uh, with, with feedback control we can have control on the on the size of the fabricated uh, component at the end we also check the microstructure and change during the during the deposition and uh, as you can see here uh, they are they are uh, uh, in different areas. We also did some EBSD tests uh, on, uh, on on substrate, so seeing the uh, the equax grain and also uh, how the recrystallization happened during the uh, during the heating up during the first uh, first part of the process in the interface and then uh, seeing how we have the columnar growth. Uh, and during the process, the macrostructure of the material is controlled by two uh, thermal factors, the temperature gradient in the liquid at the uh, solidification front as a G and the solidification rate as a R. These G and R values are the uh, dependent on the solidification condition and the location of the sample and uh, change inversely along the solidification boundary. The changing in G and R within the melting pool, we have different microstructure features, including a QX and also elongated grain. Uh, we check the ritual stress with the counter method. Uh, initially, uh, cutting the, the material from the, from from middle, and then uh, checking the deformation of the cutting plane by stress relaxation and uh, calculation by final element stress, uh, stress calculation, and uh, notice the deformation are used in defined to, to the soil stress field through the final element simulation model. Uh, here, you can see the cut artifact. If, if we put that out. Uh, we changing the we changing the laser power. We check uh, the, the system, and we saw that there is a tensile residual stress is developed near to the top of the printed part, and the uh, compressive residual stress is developed around the interface. And it's uh, uh, these areas is, is expanded by increasing the laser power, and uh, we, we need to find uh, uh, an optimum based on the microstructure response. I, I like to have more information to share with you, but unfortunately, because of the uh, the COVID situation already, there is many delay on our project, and we are already working on the microstructural response. And then uh, we're going to uh, to start uh, uh, fabricating the pins and doing the doing the test for the hybrid joint, which uh, I hope to uh, to share with you uh, in, in in near future. Uh, as a summary, I can say the temperature increase with the laser power. In general, 
melt full temperature increase with the velocity decrease as the velocity decrease and changing in the GNR as I explained is uh, it has uh, controlling the uh, the microstructure features which is uh, uh, including the ecoax and elongated drains. The tensile visual stress is developed near the top and compressive visual stress in around the interface by using the different building strategy. Uh, we can fabricate parts in accepted correlation with the uh, part profile design. Thank you.